in this video, and possibly subsequent ones if it gets ugly, we will compute the complex exponential Fourier series coefficients for a square wave. And so I've drawn a square wave here. Uh, I just received some uh, feedback from uh, somebody who walked by my office that it's not a particularly square looking square wave, but hopefully it will do what we need it to do. So in order to compute uh, Fourier series coefficients, the first thing that you need to do is identify the fundamental period of the signal because T0 shows up in a lot of places in these computations. So you can see I have this square wave. Uh, it starts at 0 and then goes until it gets to time 2 and repeats itself. And if you want to look at a different interval, you can think of starting at time 1 and it goes to time 3 and repeats itself. But in any case, the fundamental period is 2. So our t0 will be equal to 2. We also at some point will need to know omega 0 which is equal to 2 pi over t0. So in this case omega 0 is equal to pi. Okay. So with this we're in a position to begin computing the complex exponential Fourier series coefficients. We'll start with the easy one, C0, which is actually just the average of the waveform. So I can write it as 1 over 2, that's T0, times the integral over one period of the waveform of x of t. And in this case, since I can't see any reason not to, I'll integrate from 0 to 2. Okay. So what I'm doing is on, on this picture, I'll start at 0 and go to 2 and integrate the waveform, basically finding the area under this block and the signed area under this block. And so uh, I can write this then as 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1. That's getting this first block here. And between 0 and 1, x of t is 1, plus the integral from 1 to 2, that's basically this block, uh, between 1 and 2, x of t is minus 1 dt. And so if I work that out, and this 1 half should be in front of everything, so if I work that out, I have 1 half times, uh, working the first integral out here, I get 1, Working the second integral out, I get negative 1, so it's going to be 0, which is what you would expect. The, um, uh, the average of the signal is 0. Okay, so I just cleaned up the square wave, and uh, with the cleaned up square wave, let's now look at computing the Fourier series coefficient c sub k for the case where k, we'll assume here that k is not equal to 0 because we know how to do the case where um, k is equal to 0. So you remember that c sub k is 1 over t0, which in our case is 2. So we have 1 over 2, the integral from 0 to 2. Again, this can be over any fundamental period of the waveform, but 0 to 2 seems as good as anything else, times x of t e to the minus j k omega 0 t dt. You'll remember that omega 0 is pi, so I'll start using that in just a minute. Okay, and as I did when I was computing c0, I need to break this integral into two pieces because x of t between 1 or 0 and 1, between 0 and 1, x of t is 1, between 1 and 2, x of t is minus 1. So I will break this into two different integrals. The integral from 0 to 1 of 1 times e to the minus j k pi t 
dt plus the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 times e to the minus j k pi t dt. So what I need to do is work both of these integrals. I'll start with the first one with this integral here and see if we can work it. Um, in fact, uh, let's grab ourselves a... Uh, well, let's actually grab this integral and then grab ourselves a clean slate to work it on. And there you have it. Okay, so we need to compute this integral. Well, this is going to be uh, the 1 gets multiplied into the e, so we can just kind of make that guy go away. So now we're integrating an exponential. So to integrate an exponential, I end up with 1 over the term in the exponent, e, or the constant in the exponent, e to the jk pi. That should have a negative sign in front of it, times e to the minus j k pi t evaluated at 0 and 1. Okay, so evaluated at 1, this is going to be e to the minus j k pi, because if I plug 1 in for t, then I get this, minus, if I plug 0 in for t, then I get e to the minus j k pi 0, which means this whole thing is 0, which means that this is 1. Okay, so I can combine these two together and uh, chain, or well, I get minus or one over minus j k pi e to the minus j k pi minus one. And you're saying, all right, that was great fun. We're done. Well, we are sort of done, but it turns out that there's a lot more we can figure out about this before we say we're done. However, before we do that, we need to go back and work the second term. And so to do that, I should have had this ready to go before we started, but I need yet another, another uh, window to work in. We'll go back here, and now we'll grab the second term in the integral or in the expression, which looks like this. We'll take it over to its own empty place to work. And there you have it. Okay. So, um, well, we've actually got that nasty little bit of a closing bracket. Just make that go away because it bugs me. And if it bugs me, I'm sure it bugs you. Okay, so we have to work this integral, and it turns out that I forgot the negative 1 that goes here. Well, that's bad. Let's go back to our original graphic and change this to be negative 1, because between 1 and 2, x of t is indeed negative 1. Oh, we've already done that one. Okay, so here we have it. So this is going to be equal to um, 1 over minus j k pi times minus, or yeah, times minus e to the minus j k pi t evaluated at 1 and 2. So 
when we plug in 2 for t, we get an e to the minus j k 2 pi. When we plug in 1, oh man, I've done it again. This negative sign just keeps wanting to go away. There should be a negative sign up there, too, to account for the fact that I have this negative sign in uh, the integral. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time making that stick. Okay, so we're going to have here minus e to the minus j k pi times t equals 1. Okay, and uh, Let's see, I guess we can combine these guys. Uh, we can cross, or these negative signs cancel each other. So I have 1 over j k pi e to the minus j k 2 pi minus e to the minus j k pi. OK, so at this point, we've worked the integrals. And we could stop here. But if we stop here, we're going to miss some of the more interesting bits associated with this particular set of Fourier series coefficients. Unfortunately, I'm out of time on this video, so we'll continue from here in a subsequent video.